Oh yeah, guys. Welcome back everybody. This is Chad with Moss Spawn and Gun. And we're out here doing a video today with a rifle that a lot of you have been asking quite a bit about over the past several months. Uh, this is actually a um, Springfield Armory M1A loaded model that I've had for a few years now that I've been doing some constant upgrades on and uh, had a lot of help from Ray getting this project set up. But uh, this is kind of my DMR style rifle. And uh, by DMR, I mean like a designated marksman rifle. And uh, we've been out doing a little bit of shooting with this thing. I've got it basically set up, suppressed. Let me finish this mag out and we'll get into some of the details. Show you guys what this rifle is all about. Oh yeah. All right guys, like I mentioned in the beginning, this is a Springfield Armory M1A loaded model. Um, the loaded designation basically gives you a medium weight stainless steel barrel and you get a little bit better uh, military style two-stage trigger. A little bit lighter weight than a standard uh, M1A would be, but I've always loved this rifle platform and this rifle came basically into play in about 1959 and uh, there's a lot of design implements that are very similar or even marginally the same as the M1 Garand, which uh, uses a op-rod style system to operate a rotating bolt. And um, semi-automatic in both platforms, but the main difference is, is uh, the M1 Garand was a long stroke gas system as opposed to the M1A or M14, which is a short tappet style system. It uses a, a small gas piston that's actuated right up here on the gas block assembly and that imparts force on the op rod, which then cycles the action. But um, a few features of this specific rifle overall, um, I do have a few things on here that are not stock, of course. One being the gas system has been unitized, which basically means that all the components of the gas system have been tightened up. Ray actually took them apart, tightened everything up, and brazed everything in place. And uh, we took the locking ring here and I've sanded it down so it got a nice torque on the gas block assembly itself so everything is nice and rigid, almost like it's one piece up there, which does enhance accuracy potential. And um, I am running the suppressor on here. I've got an AAC muzzle device on here with my SDN6, and we're running a, a Coltac HTP suppressor cover. And the reason I'm running the suppressor cover is not only to keep from burning myself and you know Eric from burning himself with this can, it does help reduce the mirage that becomes apparent after the can starts to heat up, especially with a magnified optic. But um, it's been running great. And I've got a Schuster adjustable gas plug assembly up front. And what that allows me to do is basically adjust the gas flow just enough to cycle the action and give it about a maybe another quarter turn or so for reliability. And uh, you've got a rifle that's set up for suppressor use that's not going to damage the op rod and damage the rifle and beat itself to death. And then on the rear with the optic here, I've got an arms number 18 mount, which is a little bit difficult to find uh, seemingly, but this is the lowest profile mount that's available for the M14 M1A platform. On top of that, we've got a Leupold Mark IV, four and a half to 14 extended range tactical rifle scope with a, a TMR reticle, so a tactical milling reticle with MRAD adjustments. Very, very nice, high quality piece of glass from our friends over at Optics Planet. One of the detriments to running a scope on an M14 is that majority of the time the height of the scope over the bore is very great and it gives you like a chin weld on the uh, on the buttstock. So we're running a uh, running a cheek riser here and this is uh, made by US Palm and I purchased this from uh, TNBC a little while back and uh, this is a needed addition if you're going to try to scope an M14. But uh, I will say initially on I was just running this rifle with iron sights and uh, it is touted as being one of the best iron sight rifles that exists. I mean, you got a very nice adjustable aperture in the rear and up front, obviously I do not have the original flash hider front sight assembly, but the uh, loaded model comes with a national match front sight post, which is a very thin, precise front sight post. And uh, Eric and I were shooting this rifle in the K31 uh, probably a couple of years back at about 500 yards. And we were just wearing out a half size D28, which is a 12 inch by 20 inch target. And uh, just making short work of it once you get on the sights and know where to go. This rifle is just balls accurate for what it needs to be. I don't, I don't need a rifle that shoots 
dime size groups at 200 yards. This rifle is one minute capable with quality ammunition. And uh, I mean, I can hit a man sized target if need be out to a thousand yards with a rifle with the proper ammunition. And that's kind of the idea. This is a life and liberty gun. And that's one of the main reasons I set this rifle up. And you know, I may do some hunting with it, but this is a life and liberty gun. This is made for basically taking long range shots at anything that you need to. So rifle fires from a 20 round detachable box magazine that rocks in place. Got another magazine here loaded up with some 168 grain Sierra Match King hand loads. This is a load that I've been using with this rifle for quite some time and it shoots exceptionally well. Uh, gold metal match from Federal shoots exceptionally well as well, but it's very expensive and it's hard to find. Good substitute right here. So basically Rocky mag in place, does have a last round bolt hole open, good to go. Safety is located right here in the trigger guard. Back is safe, forward is fire. Let's see what other work we can do here. All right, half size D28, 300 yards. Just some practical accuracy testing here. Oh yeah. See if we can go for that eight inch uh, gong right to the neck, right to the left of him. It's an eight inch Magnum Auto Popper from Shoot Steel. Oh yeah. Eight inch target at 300 yards with this rifle. Ooh, right over the top of him. It's like we're getting a little bit hot here. Go back to our D28. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think we've shown what this rifle is capable of out to about 300 yards here. Pretty much make short work of anything that you can see. I mean, like I said, practical accuracy. That's an eight inch target down there that I was nailing with this thing with 168 grain Match King hand loads. And uh, I mean, what more do you need? I mean, a one minute gun, that's good enough for me. We're gonna move up to the top of the hill. Eric's gonna take some shots with this thing. And uh, we're gonna see what it can do at a little bit longer range up to 440 yards. And uh, I wish we had an extended range that we could push this thing out to, but we just don't have it available right now. But one day soon, let's move up to the top of the hill. All right, boys and girls, we backed off to the 440 mark here with Chad's uh, highly modified M1A. Uh, I'm going to nickname this the Space Ninja. I think that's a good name for this gun. It's just all the space age gadgets hanging off of it. And I tell you, the, the people that originally uh, fielded these you know, M14s back in the day, I, I can't imagine that they would figure that this gun would evolve into what it's become today. I mean, this is pretty much a pretty dang tricked out M1A. So I'm gonna take a few shots with it uh, and just see how I can do. Uh, one side note that Chad didn't mention earlier because uh, you know he didn't think about things like this. I Duracoated this stock. Um, 
you know, this was just kind of a redneck camo job. We took a bunch of, you know, just random uh, stuff we found up at the, at the uh, craft store and just made our own little, uh, you know, pattern here. Seemed to work just fine. But uh, I'm going to take a few shots with this gun. This is not intended to be a review, guys. We're just showing the gun off. Hopefully showing the gun off. And hopefully we're not going to show me missing a whole ton. You know, Chad can edit all that out, right? That's how that works. Oh, I'll just fix it in my last segment. You know? Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. We're going to take a few shots here. Go ahead. And with the SDN6 attached, guys, this is hearing safe. D28? Yes. All right. Dead center. Ready? Yep. It's dialed for it, so just uh, aim dead on. Okay. Um, bring it to the uh, right a little bit. Not much. About another half mil, maybe. To the right? Yep. Yep. There it is. Just over the right shoulder. That was way right. I think the wind may have picked that one up. I saw All it. Right. Huh. It's like we're getting just maybe a little bit of drift with the suppressor, perhaps. Yeah, I don't know. I think that, um, that this particular rifle, it kind of starts to settle in and then it finds its place. You know what I mean? It very well may. Tell you what, I'm going to try the little 8 inch popper. Aim small, miss small. Mm -hmm. Now, I was hitting it the other day, so, you know, it works. <laughs> yep. That's it. Just left. Just right. Hip. 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 I tell you what, I've got a couple of rounds left. How about a headshot on that D28 down there? It's a four inch target. That's a four inch target. All right, here we go. It ought to work. That magnet. I'd rather be safe. lucky and good any day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, ready? Yep. Just over his left shoulder. Yep. Right in the neck. All right, let me bring it up a bit, Chad. Yep. Right in the head. Got a little bit of a ring to it there. Yeah, when you hit it at the top, it gets a little bit of vibration going. Now that's a 50 cal target, so it's about three quarters of an inch thick. It is, and it, yeah, much. and, and it, it definitely solid. I'll tell you what, this rifle really is nice, and a uh, little bit of time behind it. Chad shot this rifle a lot more than I have. This is his personal gun, uh, but i tell you what, coming from the kind of guy, yeah, I, I like M1 Garands, but being a Garand guy, I can see where this, this rifle just is totally awesome. It, it really does bring that whole concept home. Um, definitely not saying, I mean, from the standpoint of being a proponent for the, for the M1A, I would say absolutely. Um, I think one of the next guns that I'm going to pick up, just to complement Chad's, we're going to work on maybe like a little uh, SOCOM 16 rig, uh, just a good little truck gun, running around gun. I'll probably end up running with something like a, 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 a red dot with some type of magnifier that can flip out of the way and just make it like a scout gun. So these rifles do lend themselves well to uh, pretty incredible feats of accuracy, especially uh, the before mentioned modifications that Chad's done to this rifle. Uh, I'm going to turn it back over to him. I just wanted to uh, get a few shots with it. Definitely an awesome rifle. All right, guys, that was pretty good shooting on Eric's part. We had a couple of inconsistencies, and I've determined that it's pretty much just from the suppressor walking around on the notch a little bit. That's one of the bad things about these 51 tooth compatible suppressors from AAC. You know, you get, you get a mount that doesn't quite lock up nice and tight like you'd like it to. It's kind of hit or miss, but um, I've dropped my Atlas bipod on here. I'm going to shoot just low from the bench, and... Uh, just going to run one mag out of it and close this video out, see what we can do at 440 yards here, 400 meters. It's 
center mass. Just off the left edge of the plate. Mm -mm. Good uh, elevation. Probably my can walking around a little bit. Yep. Good center mass hits. I'm gonna cheat up a little bit and try to get a headshot on him. Let's see. Yeah, if you're gonna do that, uh, based on where you're hitting Chad, just aim just over his left shoulder and about the distance of his head above his head and you'll hit him right in the face. You're shooting about a five inch group. Oh yeah. Shooting real good. Okay, that hit high and left. Okay. Got oh, him yeah, right in it. the neck. <laughs> oh yeah. Cheated up just to scotch. Off Probably. the left edge a good bit. About yeah. where the chain is. Yeah, that suppressor is walking around just a little bit and throwing my shots off. Same spot. All right. I'm going to go for our 8-inch popper with a little bit of ammo I've got left. Run it. See what we got. All right. Give just a dead center hold. Just off the left edge of the plate. Just bring it over to the right. All right, I'm going to give it a half About half, half the distance of the plate. I'm going to give it a half mil. Bring it over to the right some more. You're missing off, like literally an inch off the left edge. Same spot. Hmm. Over the right edge that time. Right over the top. Dead center. <laughs> well, guys, I think it's safe to say that the M1A is a very capable platform of pretty good feats of accuracy if you put a little bit of work into it and uh, upgrade the right parts. One thing that I will be doing is upgrading the suppressor that I'm running on this thing. This SDN6 has been kind of walking around a little bit on the on the 51 tooth mount, and that's kind of one of the the bad things about that line of suppressors. Um, AAC has now moved to a 90 tooth mount, which locks up a lot tighter. You know, real similar to like the Silence Co. Spec War offerings and whatnot. Finer teeth, you know, more robust locking mechanism, but. Uh, I do like the can a lot. It suppresses well. The rifle is, is just wonderful. You know, and these things are still in use today, um, you know, over in Afghanistan, the Middle East and such as designated marksman's rifles. And uh, there's multiple chassis systems that you can drop the action into, like the Sage uh, EBR chassis that uh, add a lot of weight to the platform, but they also help bed the rifle very solidly, and that's another thing that can add to the accuracy potential. That's one thing that this rifle is lacking is a good bedding job, which you know, I'm probably going to take it up to Moss and let Ray and Ryan uh, have at it and do their worst to it. But you know, the suppressor worked well. The Leupold, amazing optic. You know, the arms mount held up well. My Seekins rings, Atlas bipod, and such I use for this segment. I mean, overall, it's just an amazing rifle and. You know, a lot of you guys just been asking to to share this this rifle with you, and uh, you know, hopefully you enjoyed this look at one of my personal guns that I take a lot of pride in. Um, you know, I love the M1A platform. It's just it's got a lot of history and um, a lot of roots in um, you know very good lineage with the M1 Grand and such. But hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, stay tuned. We got a lot more coming. Take it easy.